Hi guys and welcome to another Automation Anywhere technical tutorial and this one is going to overlap with BPM. So in our story today we're going to talk about Automation Anywhere and how it can drive IBM BPM human services. So what we have in front of us here is a very simple BPM process. I mean ridiculously simple. The process starts, it creates a task where a user has to uh, interact with that task and when the user has finished interacting with that task we log some results and the process ends. So it, it's a trivial process, not really representative of a real world process, but what it does allow us to do is test our ability to drive the human service the user task that BPM is waiting for a user to complete before the process can continue. So in our story we're going to have a number of videos on this and we're going to start with the beginning. So imagine this process has run. When this process has reached this step what has happened is that the process has suspended and a task has been created and that task is, uh, has got a task identifier associated with it and the process stops. So at this point a user would normally bring up IBM BPM's process portal, would see a list of the tasks against which they are eligible to work, would claim the corresponding task, see the screens for it, and then go ahead, work it, complete it, the process would continue. Our goal here is to have automation anywhere, claim the task, work on the task, make some changes to the task, complete the task without a user physically being in or physically interacting with the screen. So the story breaks down into a number of items. The first of which is how do we have automation anywhere launch a BPM task? So let's look at our automation anywhere script and at the beginning of this story, and we'll talk about solutions to this later, at the beginning of this story I'm going to play and cheat. I'm going to assume that Automation Anywhere knows the URL to launch a specific task. Now that's not a reasonable expectation and in another video we'll talk about solutions for this but let's start with the simple aspect that I have uh, a, a URL. So let me open up a browser and let me type in the URL. So here's a URL to a particular IBM BPM task. When I enter this URL manually, I'm asked to sign on. So I'm going to sign in with my user ID and password. Once we sign in, we see the screen that is associated with that step in the process. And then I would enter, how am I shipping it, maybe by UPS or FedEx, and I would hit the OK button and that would complete that task. But our story here has started by somehow, magically, already knowing the URL to launch the task. And as I say, we'll come back to that at a later step. So I want you to assume right now that by some magic, Automation Anywhere has determined the URL of the task. Again, let me stress, we'll come back to that later. However, assuming that we've got the, t uh, the URL to launch the task, in our story what we do is we perform a f uh, command in the task to open the specific URL. I've got it in a variable. We're opening the URL that is in this variable which will launch the task. The next thing I do is when we launch that URL, so let's run it again manually, when we launch that URL what we see here is we have a login screen. So Automation Anywhere has to perform a login. So when that URL is opened, we find the username field within that, uh, that screen and we put in my user ID. We find the password field in that screen. We put in my password and we click the button which is the OK button that would cause us to log in. Okay. So at that point we'll have logged in. Now in my story, because I didn't want to just uh, do something, well not do anything when I get my screen, in my story what I want to do is I want to look at the zip code to where we're shipping some product and if it's an odd number I want to ship via UPS. 
If it's an even number, I'm going to ship by FedEx. So uh, the Automation Anywhere task is going to look at this screen, is going to look at the zip code, is going to determine whether it's an odd zip code or an even zip code, and based on that, it's going to choose a shipper and then click OK. So in the logic here, we're now at the point where we've logged in, we've got this screen in front of us. The logic here now retrieves the value of the zip code from the browser screen. We then determine whether it's even or odd and assign that to a, va a variable. So if it's even, it's evenly divisible by 2. If it's odd, it's not evenly divisible by 2. And then, as a conditional here, so this is cool, this is where we're using automation anywhere of conditionals. In this conditional, if it's odd, we're going to ship via UPS. If it's even, we're going to ship by FedEx. So we set the value of the variable shipper to be either UPS or FedEx. Then we set the value of the text box uh, for shipper. That's this value here. And then to conclude, we click the OK button and that closes the browser. And that's the, that's the long and the short of it. If we, uh, if we run this uh, technology, whoop, if we run this technology, um, that should complete the task. So let us do this uh, using debugging. So let's switch on, uh, I'm sorry, enable debugging. So we've got debugging enabled. And that way we'll be able to see it run slowly. So I'm saving my work, I'm hitting the run button, and now let's watch carefully what happens. So first of all, let me close my browser window and then let's run. So the command will open up the URL. Um, it will log me in by supplying a user ID and password. It will look at the zip code and it very quickly there said UPS because it ended in one and that completed the task. If we were to go back to IBM's uh, BPM environment, let me find my BPM screen, get with me one second. Let me find my BPM screen, we were blocked there. If I refresh this, oh, no, but uh, another process, but uh, we're now unblocked, the process completed, and there is no longer a task waiting for us to complete. So, we used the Automation Anywhere screen driving capabilities. Now let me take you through a little bit more of those. Notice I'm using Automation Anywhere's object cloning command. That requires a little bit of explanation. The notion behind object cloning is that within a Windows screen, every window that you see is made up of Windows objects. And object cloning says, I want to f uh, let the user select a particular screen UI building block, and we're going to work with that UI building block. So for example, let me log in again. Let's, let's show this, this username field. Let me show you how that would work. So I might, for example, open up my browser. I might get to my login screen here. And now we're waiting for a login. So this is, this is the screen that I want to drive. The way I would have created this activity is I would find my object cloning. I would drag and drop that in here. In the object cloning, I now specify what window am I going to capture. I'm going to capture my uh, uh, login screen for BPM. I click and hold the capture button. And now I get to select the appropriate window. And uh, we're seeing some UI strangeness here because of my screen recording. But I get to select the appropriate window. And uh, that would then, uh, once selected, that would then let me select the form login. And then the action I could perform would be to, for example, set the text of that activity. Now, the reason you saw some bugs there is because it's very sensitive to uh, uh, screen resolution and browser. In fact, I believe that this browser, if I reset the zooming level, I've got a suspicion I'm zoomed in on this, which confuses automation anyway. But I won't bother about that. But if we look at this activity, here's the one I created earlier. Uh, we're setting the text of that window control. Now, I want to call that out because we have a bug in BPM and Automation Anywhere integration. I'm using object cloning here in Automation Anywhere, 
but I don't really want to use object cloning. And the reason for that is that I'm working with a browser. And one usually wants to use object cloning with native Windows applications. When one is working with a browser-based application, one would normally want to use the web recorder technology. With the web recorder technology, I can drag and drop that in, I can open a browser, I can manage the web controls, select pages, and then uh, drill into the different building blocks here, for example, like this, and now I'm working with the username. This is the web recorder technology of Automation Anywhere. Now remember, Automation Anywhere has three distinct UI driving technologies. One is geometry based, where the mouse and the keyboard are moved, or the mouse is moved, to a particular geometry and keyboard strokes and mouse clicks are recorded. That's a brute force technology. Option two is the object cloning mechanism, where Automation Anywhere sees the world as a set of Windows controls. And option three is specifically for browser-based interaction where we use the web recorder technology. Now, since we're working here with a browser, and when I log into my browser, I, oh, all's good, I should be able to use the web recorder technology. However, for IBM BPM, we cannot currently use the web recorder. Now, the, the details in this are, are a little hazy, but apparently it's to do with the way that IBM's BPM generates uh, web pages. Uh, it appears to be something unusual relating to frames within frames or something along those lines. Suffice it to say that there's a known issue and that as of today, October 2017, one cannot use the web recorder with BPM browser coach pages. When and if that changes, we'll come back and we'll address that in a new video. But for right now, you have to use object cloning, which works, it works great, but it's not potentially ideal because we're going to a lower level technology, i.e. Windows controls, rather than the higher level web recorder story. All right, so uh, this story started by saying I magically found the URL to launch a task, and in a subsequent video, we'll come back to how we can automate the determination of the URL necessary to launch a task. This has been a technical uh, video, uh, a little bit more technical than normal, but uh, hopefully you still found some value in it, and I look forward to making more of these in the future. Thanks for now, guys. Bye-bye.